With a yo ho ho, it's Tail of the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play in Azuma 11 3 Team Ogre Attacks. And very recently, we have lost two players of our team who I liked very much Sean Frost and Jordan Greenway. I liked both of them. And although we have been given replacements in the form of. Wait, was that the one? No. Even though we've been given Kevin Dragonfly and David Samford as replacements, I think rather than make do with them, let's customise a bit and get a few players for our team who are actually our own free choice. And I've selected two players which I would like to have on my team, but it sure... There we go. Musa Silla. <laughs> This player wants to improve Qatar's manufacturing base and diversify. I love the Qatar players with the most boring descriptions. Like, last time I played the game of Team Ogre Attacks, I recruited a midfielder who um, was dependent on trying to fix the oil exports of the Qatari country. And that's a very redundant way of saying Qatar. Uh, but, you know, I like those people who just like some completely redundant things. And I gave him a defensive move, which I liked ever so much. And I intend to do the same with a new Qatari player who I'm going to put on the team. So, Sula, let me see how good you are. Should you prove able to beat me, I shall join your team. Do we have a deal? Yes. I will definitely be getting at least this one defender, and I can see myself recruiting a second defender if I really want to, because Inazuma Japan's selection, you know, we've got Jack, who's a very, <laughs> very funny, involved in the story. He's not got the best moves at the moment. We've got Nathan, who doesn't have any defensive moves and basically functions as a midfielder. Thor, who's a great defender. Except he's not a defender, he's a midfielder. We've got Scott Banyan, who nobody likes, and he hasn't got any new moves since the last game. That's the most um, obvious way to put it. Archer Hawkins, who's fine now, but he certainly wasn't for a long time. It took him a while to uh, learn how to even play the game. Never mind, learn to defend. Hurley Kane, he's got a good defensive move, but it requires having a player of large body type, such as Jack, on the field. So if we take Jack off the team, then we can't actually use Hurley's defensive move anymore, and that's the only one he gets. He's more focused on taking shots for some reason. And that's pretty much our defensive lineup, so it's not the best. I do recommend diving into some other teams to find new defenders. Now, I'll always put players that I like as a higher priority than players who are good. Well, let's just take this man out of the Qatari team and he can represent the Japanese team who everyone will believe that he's native to, right? Because they're going to have to. I suppose I forgot to mention that Todd is also a defender, but likewise, he doesn't have any defensive moves either, and I don't think he actually gets any. So, next, I'm skipping the big waves, because I'm not doing that accent ever again. There's been a lot of requests for me to put Gazelle on my team, and there's been an equally high amount of requests for me to put Torch on the team. This is my response to the outcry. I've gone for the other one. Now, Aphrodite is near a fountain, and he is found in the same, roughly the same place. He's near this fountain, but like we saw with Jimmy Mack in a previous episode, he's not there all the time. So if you don't see him on the top screen, somewhere near the fountain, then you need to go off the map, reset the area, and then sometimes he'll be there. On this occasion, he is. So, we meet again. How are you doing? Me? I just came here for a change of pace. It's so calming here, wouldn't you agree? I like it. By the way, would you care for a match? Nah. Wh no? 
What a shame. I just wanted to test the waters with that. Haha, <laughs> get it? Test the waters. That's a joke. Yeah. The, he takes a lot of work to get... We need to not lose possession, and I was not prepared for that kind of criteria. Oh, no. Please, run. Run away as fast as you can. I don't think any of my characters have dribbling moves except for our, uh, except for Austin. Oh, wait. Ax uh, Axel does have heat tackle, but that's not very good. Neither is double touch, really, on, on Austin. But uh, when we're doing a conventional match, I will start to talk more comfortably. Right now, I need to concentrate on winning. Mark, you can't dribble either with special moves because you've got goalkeeping stuff to learn. Oh, no, I'm... Oh, ah, no, oh, I did it. <laughs> oh, I thought I accidentally passed to someone on their team. That would have been an instant loss. But that is not all of the stress I need to go through. Now I need to play football with him. But I've had several respects, uh, re requests to put a gazelle on my team. But I've avoided against that. A, because we've already got enough strikers. And also because I let's play it in Azuma 11 to Firestorm. It feels like I'm missing the point if I then recruit the guy from in Azuma 11 Blizzard. I want to represent my choice to show that I believe it's the right one. So similarly, you could say, well, why don't you put Torch on the team then? And I agree, that's a great idea. That's why I did it in my past playthrough of Team Ogre Attacks. And he was great. I loved using Atomic Flare on my side of the team. But because I've done it before, I'm not that inclined to do it again, you know? So then I thought, wait a minute. There's this one extremely important Inazuma 11 character who's been in every game so far, has a huge fandom behind him. I've never used him on a team ever. He's a midfielder, which is the very thing that our team is lacking, especially now that Jordan's gone. It's perfect, is it not? I think that he should have either been on Inazuma National in the game normally, or the Korean team should have qualified for the actual World Cup alongside Inazuma Japan. That's not the way it works out, but I want to take Mr. Byron Love Aphrodite on this journey with him, on this journey with me, to show off all of his new moves and to actually be a useful asset to us. He's a midfielder who will actually concentrate on being a midfielder because heaven's time, excuse the pun, it's godlike. But of course, the sad part is if you're going to add two new people to the team, that was the wrong person, you do have to remove two people from the team. And I've had a think about it. And don't worry, I'm not getting rid of Kevin or David just yet because we've only just got them. Let's be honest, no one likes Banyan, and he doesn't even get any story involvement in this game, if I'm being honest. He's just here for dialogue. They never give him a new move that's unique to him in this game. He's just carrying Whirlwind Force from the first half of the previous game, and that's a little disappointing to me. Now, Aphrodite is, of course, a midfielder, and I've got to remember what I chose here. Yeah, I think I pretty much get the idea. Thor Stoutberg, he doesn't do anything for a long time. He doesn't really do much in general throughout the game, but I, do, I don't want to completely neglect him in this adventure because he's a brand new character, sort of. But I'm going to take him off for now, and when we get sick of David Samford, we'll kick him off instead, but we'll keep him for now, if that sounds okay. So now that I've got these two new players, they're both level 5, which, despite being the name of the developers of this amazing game, is not a particularly good level to be at. So I want to boost them up a little more. And there's a locked door in Ryman Club Room. More on that at the end of the episode. But for now, let's head to Okinawa. Coming from the wrong side of town, I wanted to arrive from the beach. But, sit back and whine, man. It's Akinawa. 
Yep, we got the key to Okinawa in the previous episode, and now we can buy! <laughs> we can buy Ganymede Ray! Oh, great! We can also buy a uh, Jordan's signature move, Astro Break, but that would be disrespectful. Could buy Inazuma 1, but that would be disrespectful to Ace 2 Shoes, because he redid all of my old thumbnails containing that move for the original game. Flame Breath, that's very funny when it fails, but, um,. Yeah, I think we're just going to be going with Ganymede Ray, and you know what? Oh. In Inazuma 11-3, Lightning Bolt, I remember... Bomb Blast, I remember giving the move to Caleb Stonewall, and that looks incredible. But Stonewall, I have a more important move for him in mind, so I'm actually going to give it to Xavier. And the reason for that is that off-screen, his Meteor Blade... Finally leveled up to V3, meaning it can't level up anymore, so it would feel wasteful to use it when it's already maximised. We'll use Ganymede Ray a little more often with him, because it is one of the funniest moves in the game, and no doubt I will get to show it off. And pretty much everyone else I already had. No, I can't use the capsule machine if I haven't had any random encounters. They're talking about Neo National there. Apparently they've been spotted at Mary Times. Well, we will certainly be having a look over there once we've finished exploring the beach. Because call me a Hoenn fanboy all you like, but Okinawa is one of my favourite locations in gaming. It just... it just is a nice place. Great music, great atmosphere, a nice beach. Where nothing's gonna go wrong. In fact... We're going to get something better. Dylan Magpie, the goalkeeper, wants to join us. And that's fine by me. He can come along if he wants to. He's never going to see any use. But he, if you actually want to leave the sunny shores of Okinawa, I can only give you my respect and take you along the, the ride with me. So that pretty much shows off what there is to see in Okinawa town itself, but no doubt there'll be stuff to do in Mary Times competition route related, I would imagine, and maybe that will unlock more places to go as well. But, you know, this episode was never meant to have any real progress in it. I wanted to get Aphrodite and Scylla for my team so that I have a bit of variety and I'm not just using the default throughout the whole game. But the, the actual story, that's for next time, in a different country altogether. Now over here... No, you're not important. I thought you might have been. I think it's in the post-game you can get a guy called Sagaminator here. But we're, we're too early for that yet. So Merry Times, I don't know about you, but if you went to school here, you might not get the best education. But you know you'll have a good time. And speaking of have a good time, there is a match we can play with the Mary Times team, which I don't need to show in its entirety. But let's see if a level 5, he might be about level 7 by now, given that I've done a couple of random encounters. We do not want Todd on Strike Force. We might as well put Scylla on defensive force, though. Let's see if this level 9 player can get a goal against Mary Times. Then again, if you remember the last Let's Play, Rocky was a thorn in my side. He was a brilliant goalkeeper. He stopped even Axel's Fireball Storm, so there's no reason why this Chaos Break should go in, but 67 TP, that's huge! Can it go in at this low level? I would like to see that. Unfortunately, Aphrodite does not have God Break in his moveset, which I don't understand because it's a brand new move that they invented for him for this game and this season of the anime, but instead of having God Break, his, his moveset is God Knows, Chaos Break, Heaven's Time, and then just Shoot Plus, which makes his shots a little stronger, rather than having the brand new move that was designed for him. I don't pretend to understand that. 
But that's the decision they went with. So, yay, Samford got a goal and he's completely rude about it. This is why your time on my team is limited. No, sky is the limit. I didn't want to take a shot with Jack, but I've been left with no choice. Sky is the limit is a very good tactic, but the downfall is that while it gets you so close to the goal for basically a free shot, you don't really have any control over who's actually going to take that shot for you. And it gave me the worst choice possible. I'm a foreign mullies or blue! <laughs> oh, I tell you something, I always forget how empty the team feels when we first lose. Wow, Scylla, you learned the wall. That's original. While Kevin got Wyvern Blizzard. A move that you cannot use without Sean Frost. Wow. That's cold. But we can now go to a Hime, which didn't... It was that one area in Inazuma 11 2 where we didn't actually recruit anyone new. So it makes you wonder, well, what could they possibly hide here in this game? And the answer to that is, I don't know, probably nothing. <laughs> but I'm going to give it an explore. I always check the move manuals. Because indeed, these are good moves. These are Dragon Tornado. Revolution V. Steve's signature move in the Dark Emperors. At Wyvern Crash, which is actually part of uh, Kevin's moveset right now. Yet immediate when we learned it as part of his level up move set it immediately became wyvern crash version 2 which confused me a little i'm gonna tone down the talking to every npc is something i was going to say until i realized i had not a clue this guy was from wild junior high so it's a good job i was checking everybody eh now I didn't skip over it. I will just quickly deal with Wild and then we'll get back into something a little more important because this ca there must be two teams here in a heat, mate. It can't... Oh, I know who it is. I'll keep my mouth shut by using Wyvern Crash because I can't use Wyvern Blizzard because it's a move that he just learns that he can't use. Oh, Sean, he's such a good striker and such a good defender. I've given the game enough rep for kicking Jordan off, but let it be remembered. Losing Sean is arguably worse. I just have my own personal tastes. Anyway, while you don't stand a chance, you're like the first team you fight in the tournament of the first game. Why are we only playing you now? God knows, you're about to experience the wrath of a god! Oh, that one thing that the poor, the bloody fandom just won't let go. He has this, it's Aphrodite, he has this one line in the anime which people cannot forgive. I guess I've got to play it, haven't I? You're about to experience the wrath of a god! Just because the dub voices one character badly doesn't mean it's that bad. And the real reason I cut back in is to show this goalkeeper's victory quote. Yep. They went that far into the barrel for jokes. And with that, despite ending with the team... Yeah, well, it's gone... Farm, Otaku, Shuriken, Umbrella, Actual Inazuma 2 Team, Merry Times, and then back to Wild. But our reward for completing that competition route is Caleb and Jude's midfielding move, Field of Force. 
I don't intend to have duplicate moves on the team, so I'm not going to use it, but it's a very good move. And now, all I need to do to claim that extra big reward is S-Rank Shuriken, who I'll be sure to do off-screen, and then I will show you what that reward is. But for now, I guess you'll have to wait. And, um... Isn't that where my favourite line of dialogue in the last game is meant to be? Yeah, Hime's been cut in half. Just like in the a couple of other menus. That's that's a bit of a shame. In in Azuma 2, my favourite NPCs in the game were there. Just somebody who says, Uh girl, will you like to go in the pond with me? Or the hot springs with me? And then she just responds as a separate dialogue box, purely with the word no. But she's gone, unfortunately. Now here, on the very end, we get the Royal Redux ticket. Because we can't exactly just confront Ray Dark here on the end of the, on the, end of the pier, have they? Something's changed under the competition route in Ryman's club room, which is locked behind the key, which requires me to do a Wi-Fi download, and I am not certain as to whether or not that's still running. Alright, so I went to the trouble of S-ranking the Shuriken match off-screen, and um, yes, I can definitely say, if you're not the type of person who enjoys these videos where I go off venturing around the world, doing optional matches in optional areas, then I can tell you there'll only be one more of these, and that won't be happening for quite a while now. A good 10-15 episodes, I would estimate. Not for a while, but for now we have completed Shuriken with an S rank, which means we can claim the S rank reward for this competition route, which is critical. <laughs> Let's, um, let's find out what that does, eh? We'll pretend to give it to someone. Somehow I doubt I actually will be doing, but, uh, what would it do? Just to, uh, you know, just for imagination. It gives you random critical hits. I mean, I assumed that was what it did, but then I denied it because I thought, there's nothing like that in this game. This game doesn't have critical hits. At least not until the fifth game. But they're apparently in here in a little hidden way. So there you go. And uh, there's also one which can trick the ref into calling a foul. Not as good! But I must answer a question for myself. Is the Wi-Fi surface for this game still working? Because obviously it's not in Inazuma 1 and 2 because those are DS games. So they can't connect to the their Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. But yes, it seems this game can indeed download data from Wi-Fi, even though there's been several sequels to this game. So, oh great! I thought I'd lost access to several parts of content, but no. It seems that I can indeed download all these things, like the Fallen Zeus ticket, Genesis ticket, Ticket of Darkness, more importantly, the Club Room Key, and the Sweet Shop Key. I can't afford these right now, would you believe? But I will certainly be taking the time to buy them as soon as I can afford it. And look at all these moves that I downloaded. The, these are limitlessly good. Just by connecting to the internet once and going to cool kit. You get access to all this amazing stuff. These are some of the best moves in the game and they just give you it like the earth. The earth. The the final move you get in Inazuma 2 alongside Neo Galaxy. Look at the strength of these things. Brave shot is 76 TP and it's a long shot. There's a reason these things are so expensive, but um, yes, I will be saving up for Club Room Key and the Sweet Shop Key. I just kind of can't afford it yet. I'm a bit too broke. 